Vapi finally released their real-time API integration and it is awesome. This allows us to build voice assistants that respond faster, are more empathetic and are multilingual right out of the box. But you might ask yourself, how good is it really? Like, I mean, can you actually use it in live applications? And is Vapi necessary anymore in the first place? And that's what I'll answer in this video. Now at this point, I assume you have already heard of the real-time API, but if you haven't, I made a full video about that right up here. You can check it out. But to give you a quick summary, the real-time API is basically a multimodal API or AI that allows you to interact with voice assistants both through text and speech directly. The good thing about it is that it uses speech to speech, meaning that it cuts out what we currently use inside of the orchestration layer of translating things to text back and forth, which makes that whole thing a lot better, obviously faster, more empathetic, and we can also treat it multilingually, which is exactly what I mentioned at the beginning, and that's the reason why it's so awesome. However, it might come as a surprise to you that we use the real-time API only in a very, very small percentage of use cases inside of our agency. Now, before I'm going to explain why that is the case, I'm going to show you how the integration with Vapi looks in the first place. Now, to get started, the only thing you need is a Vapi account. So if you don't have one, simply head over to vapi.ai and create an account up here. Now, we are, I already have one, obviously, so I'm just gonna log in, which is right here. And once you're logged in, all you do is you go to Platform Assistance, click on Create Assistant up here, and just name it the way you'd like. I'll just call it Lisa, it's my standard name. And I'm going to start with a blank template. Now, if you already have one, you can use that same one as well, because Vapi makes it incredibly easy to integrate the real-time API. Now, once we've created an assistant, I simply type in a first message. That's basically what the assistant is going to say in the first place. So let's say, hello, Yanis. How can I help you today, right? And as a system prompt, I'll keep it short. I say, have a pleasant conversation about life. Perfect. Now, in order to use the real-time API, we need to select the real-time API cluster within the model because that's the only thing you need to do to actually test it. And you can do that by selecting OpenAI here if you haven't already done that. And within the model, by clicking on it, you will find down here the 040 real-time cluster. That's the one you're going to select. And that is literally all you need to do to try the real-time API directly inside of Buffy. You might have also seen the pop-up message down here, which just refers to the voices. So in case you already had an assistant previously, you need to make sure that you select uh, from the voice provider list OpenAI and one of their predefined voices, cause the real-time API only works with a certain set of voices that they predefined for you so right now you cannot train your very own voice which is one of the reasons that I'm going to in, in depth later as well but right now we only have those voices available with the real-time API so you can select one from here I'll just leave it at alloy and now I'm gonna publish it and that's literally all I need to do now with that out of the way we can actually give it a call and listen to it so all I'm going to do is click up here on talk with assistant and we can have a conversation hello Janice how can I help you today hey can you just tell me a joke sure here's one for you why don't skeletons fight each other? They don't have the guts. Ah, that's a good one. ¿Do hablas español también? Hola. ¿En qué puedo ayudarte hoy? No sé, no sé. Perfecto. Can I speak no with you problema. in English as well after as well? So, do you still understand what I'm saying? Yes. I understand you perfectly. That's all I wanted you to see. So, as you can see, it can literally switch during the conversation into different languages. It understands them and it can respond appropriately and as you have probably noticed it is also a lot faster than using the standard orchestration layer now vapi also has implemented tool calling so if you have already worked with tool calling if not you can check out one of my other videos i'm going to link it up here as well you can create tools that basically give the assistant utility within the conversation of the assistant so that it can act, get access to multiple tools outside of the platform now you can, for example, imagine, like I build a really, really cool assistant here that I'm going to show you very soon. But let's just take the get current weather assistant tool. This basically allows us to get the current weather and you can connect this directly to your assistant that he created within the tool sections. And this would then be able to get the weather from an external endpoint. Like we usually build those scenarios with make.com. You can also find tons of them on my channel. And this would then return the actual weather that it grabbed from somewhere else in the internet back into the assistant so that it can use it and leverage inside of the conversation. Now, like I mentioned, this feature is already integrated into Vapi as well, which is awesome. So I definitely suggest you to give it a try. The real-time API is amazing. And as you can see, it has a lot of awesome benefits. Now, the probably biggest misconception I see people having when they look at the real-time API is that they think the real-time API is a competitor to those platforms like Vapi, Blend, etc. while in the end, it actually isn't. You have to see that from a different perspective. And you've probably seen that maybe in one of my other videos. Let me actually just open that because I think it's important to see. Now, I have right here a mirror board, which you have seen probably from one of my previous videos, which kind of demonstrates this whole setup a little bit more visually, which is hopefully helpful to you to understand it because Vapi initially was actually founded based on what we call the orchestration layer. So having a setup that enables you in the first place to make voice AI calls, 
And that was done by translating voice to text, then sending that stuff to the LLM, so maybe OpenAI, and then translating that back to speech, like using a text-to-speech provider such as 11 Labs. And because there are so many connections in between, things were very slow. And these platforms like Papi try to solve that by building a product around this voice orchestration layer and making things faster. Now, since OpenAI is at the forefront of AI technology, especially if it comes to voice setups, you can imagine that they built a setup that allows you to use speech to speech. So it cuts out that whole layer of text out of the equation, which you can see here as well. This was my basic interpretation of an orchestration layer. We have this conversion right here and the real-time API layer basically cuts that out of it so it talks directly with LLM. We don't know exactly what they do inside because it isn't exposed obviously, but we know that it is a lot faster and that we see it as speech to speech because we send in speech, we get out speech. We can send in text, we get out text. That's the main concept of it. Now, because OpenAI released that and because of nature on how OpenAI structures their products, they obviously also want to scale horizontally, meaning that they want to focus on people that are already in that space and try to leverage their utility and help their clients to do more with, with additional tools that they can use in that whole tech stack to just get more done. And because of that, you can imagine that OpenAI is probably not focusing on anything that's vertical, which is anyways the case what we focus on if, it's, if it comes to building voice AI agents, because you don't just build a voice AI agent for the sake of having it, you build a voice AI agent to solve a specific problem. And this specific problem is usually located in a vertical, meaning if you're in the medical space, if you're in real estate, you build a voice assistant that does stuff like customer support, maybe qualifying leads or scheduling appointments, right? It is one specific use case. And that is definitely not what OpenAI is going to focus on. OpenAI is focusing on the technology that enables you to do those things. You are still required in a lot of cases to build the utility on top, which is why we are seeing so many other platforms popping up that focus on a specific use case and try to optimize it in that way. Now, that kind of brings us back to Wapi and also the graph that I built here, because as you can see, I have both the voice orchestration layer and the real-time layer, layer being combined inside of the Wapi voice platform. So I have basically already mentioned and predicted that at the beginning, once the real-time API has been released, because I knew that the real-time API is going to be only utility that Wapi can now also leverage to make the product better. Because as you can imagine, Wapi, especially in the beginning, like all the other voice providers, they had two things in mind. Number one is making the voice orchestration layer faster and better with more features so that they can get better quality and a better throughput whenever making calls. And secondly, putting a lot of more utility on top of it. So that's why we have seen things like squats or with bland conversational pathways. It is basically the utility on top that makes those platforms a lot more valuable because they have actual insights into what people need to scale vertically instead of horizontally and they can focus around that set of features so that you can build things with it. This as well is one of the main reasons why we actually use Wapi in our company for building out voice assistants up to Fortune 500 companies because we can promise them that we can get something done because we know it is super flexible and we can adjust it in the way they want it. Now, with the introduction of the real-time API layer, you cannot imagine, I've probably been insanely excited since the release of the beta. And now since it's here, I thought it's gonna be already super, super cool. And it is super, super cool, but unfortunately not for live systems. The reason for that, I'm going to share in a couple of minutes. But before I do this, I would like to just finalize on this graph or the diagram that you see right here, because this is exactly what I mentioned since I have Wapi open. You can see here as well for the extra utility, what they do is they simplify the whole billing setup because you can imagine having an orchestration layer, you need to build a lot of different platforms like DeepGram, 11 Labs to get things done. And as well for telephony integration, like the real-time API is mainly for developers right now. If you want to build with it, it is not that easy to do that visually because you need to communicate yourself with the real-time API and make sure that all those features work together. Now, you've seen that with Wapi by setting up an assistant, all of those features work right out of the box, so you can even do that without any coding knowledge. Now, the things I'm most happy about are probably those squats and blocks and variables, basically the whole utility stack that allows us to build really cool voice agents on top of it, as well as with different handovers, phone number transfers, etc. All of those things are super valuable, which is also part of why Wapi is our go-to platform. Oh, and I hope this whole setup is now a little bit clear as well that why I believe that Wapi is not gonna go away so soon and why the real-time API is not necessarily a competitor because the real-time API can be leveraged by those platforms to build voice assistants better and faster. Now the part with the real-time API being better is still a very subjective thing at least of as of now because the way it is currently set up we don't really use it in live scenarios or in live voice agents 
We do have some smaller use cases where we use it, especially for smaller clients that just want to try stuff and they want to just take advantage already of what's on the market. But mainly for the bigger companies we're working with, we still use the voice orchestration layer because it has a lot of more features and possibilities that we cannot leverage with a real-time API as of now. So yes, the real-time API is out and I definitely encourage you to check it out, learn about it because it is going to come and it's going to be really, really cool. But as of now, the real-time API is still in beta, meaning that even OpenAI doesn't recommend it using it in live environments mainly because they're still testing it they still try to refine it and some features might break some things still don't work as well and we have seen that in the past by trying it so we obviously also try to build those agents with it and there were still a lot of problems where the audio stream cut off at the end so the voice just stopped speaking which caused some delays maybe even the AI not answering at all and that was just not a good user experience now like I mentioned, for smaller use cases, we still sometimes use it because people like speed. And for whatever reason, I assume there are many, people still value latency and the price quite a lot. Even though in what we've seen in our agency, those are secondary factors. Yes, they're important, but they are secondary because the value we can provide based on data is a lot more, and I swear a lot more, than anything we've seen with latency or with the pricing of those AI agents. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you so far and you learned something new. And just to summarize, let me just get some of the facts back together. The most important one I think is that the Realtime API is not a direct competitor to those platforms like VAPI, Blend, etc. It is there to enhance their services, allow their utility and their extra features to thrive even more provide more value to us in the long term. And I just definitely recommend to familiarize yourself with the real-time API because it is going to come, it is going to be live and fully available inside of the OpenAI tech stack, which we 100% will leverage for some of the use cases. But as of now, I would not recommend using the real-time API in any live applications cause it still has bugs. So if you are dealing with sensitive data or you have to just have a really high functionality and throughput, it is probably not the place for you. You can definitely try it and start building all your systems on top of it because the more you already prepare the easier it is for you to switch later on but since wapi anyways makes it so easy to switch between those assistants you might even just want to a b split test it which you can also do using just some simple setup because in the end as you know with wapi they offer transient assistance meaning that you can literally adjust the model and the providers on the fly now that is all i got for you today thank you very much for watching i appreciate your time if you like those videos i would definitely appreciate it as well if you subscribe to my channel and like the video and i'm going to see you next time thank you see ya